Oh yes. Oh. I'm trying to stick. Whoa. Oh. Welcome to the Contour Collective channel. I'm Chris and in a few weeks I'll be taking on the EEWS in Inner Leatham, which is where we are today. So e-bike racing is definitely in its infancy when it comes to events and there's probably only a few people out there that have really thought about specific training for e-bikes. So there's definitely a lot to learn for these like mammoth e-bike days. So we're going to try and uh, cover a few tips that you can consider on preparing for e-bike races. We're going to have a think about the EWS one which definitely take e-bike racing to a different level. A lot of regional e-bike races have a single loop and then they'll throw in one climb possibly during the day. The difference with the EEWS uh, races depending on which class you're on is multiple loops. So for the pro category which I'll be taking on has three loops and that is a lot of batteries. Three batteries and they're big days. So with three loops that's over 3,000 meters of climbing or descending which is a lot of volume on the body and you're lugging around a bike that's over 20 kilograms. So before a race it's a good idea to plan some test loops and try and simulate a race. So today we're out here we're going to do a couple of loops and just gets into having to change batteries, what to carry and just what that physical load is on the body with a lot of descending in a day. So we're at the bottom of one of the climbs from last year's EWS. This aspect of e-bike racing is probably one of the most critical. So I lost probably more time on this stage and the other climbing stage than any of the downhill stages. So it's really key to practice and think about how you're climbing. <laughs> So one thing I really struggle with is getting uh, understeer when I'm climbing as well as going off the back of the bike. That's typically what I've struggled with. So we're going to try this climb in a few different modes, try a few different lines and just see what works, if there's ways and uh, different approaches to improve the climbing and sort of lose less time on the stage. Let's give it a shot Christo. Oh yes! Oh! That's the, that's the issue in like full assist mode is you just get out of control. It's just too much like a wild pony. Why is it so hard? So this stage I think is particularly hard because of the just the number of loose rocks around roots and there's like the change in uh, undulations and gradients so you're constantly shifting how you're trying to ride the stage uphill and that just makes it pretty challenging to get up in in one go. What do you think is key to like finding grip and flow on a stage like this? Well clearly the the key to finding grip is using the special giant mode um, but I think in all seriousness the best way is to try and like spot drier lines put the power down where there's no roots and pick your line and maybe a longer line is going to be quicker. What do you think about like the different e-bike modes to like control your power because obviously like the uh, full boost mode can be quite unpredictable when yeah. trying to control your output over wet and slippery routes so what do you think at the moment is your thoughts on that? Okay so I've tried a couple of modes here already this morning I went on just the second mode up from sort of eco and that didn't really give me enough assistance to really get that speed and get up the climb and then I've tried it on the full boost mode on the red um, and that's like too much kicky and it's like doesn't transfer the power as smoothly so somewhere in between is probably best for these more technical climbs and then you've got this special mode don't know if I mentioned the special mode um, which has a bit more control actually built into the motor and it's almost like traction control so it knows when you've kind of like eased off and it 
comes on a bit smoother and that helps avoid that sort of wheel spin. And tyres, obviously we're going mm. uphill, we're not going down and th what we want is grip and we don't really care about rolling resistance. So yeah. um, what are you thinking tyres and inserts? Um, I tried the climb a couple of times there with way too much pressure in my rear tyre. So dropping pressure is going to give you that extra grip and you might actually want to put in pressure at the top before you descend down. So I'm going to run pretty soft tyres and maybe carry a pressure gauge, chuck some air in at the top before the next stages. Running inserts then allows you to still drop the pressure but not rim out. So sticking the cush core in for instance is going to give you uh, that extra ability to run lower pressures and a new tyre, something with grip, with edge, that's just going to dig in. A front edge? Front edge, front edge. Yeah, that's going to help. So I've got a nice new Vigilante on the back, which is going to hook up nicely, I think, on these climbs. Cool. Well, let's watch you try this climb a few more times. All right. Oh. I'm trying to stay. Trying to stay on the uh, track. I'm going to try that again, Krista. Okay. It's all about the line. It's uh, it's quite hard to to actually eye it up. Whoa! I'm going to try a different line again. Oh! I did clip in. Cut down. That's going to help. Lord my seat. So you mentioned there you lowered your seat. Why is that important? Um, so I think actually the positioning of the bike's key because you need to balance the weight on the back of the wheel but also making sure the front's not lifting up. Now I need to So that's us finishing up on some technical climb practice. I've certainly sort of learned a few things here. While uh, the actual mode is called Smart Assist by Giant, we quite like calling it Giant mode. It's pretty special. It uses six sensors and like special algorithms. It's like amazing just how it applies different traction and just keeps the um, sort of momentum going, stops you uh, spinning out. So. Yeah, we're going to go and look at some bike uh, setup tips now, geometry and a few other things um, while we uh, do a bit more riding in between. Okay, so let's talk about bike setup. Not the usual sort of suspension, uh, tyre pressures, that side of things, but we'll look at two things. Firstly, e-bike racing, you're out there for a long time, you don't have much time between stages, so having a mud guard, I've got the mud hugger on, is really key to try and reduce the sort of admin between stages. The next thing's just thinking about geometry. So I've been running the Rain E for the last few weeks just on the low mode, but that's been something I've noticed, I've been catching my pedals. It's super slack at 63.7 degrees, really aggressive amazing for the descents but for the the racing and um, i've used the flip chip uh, option i've changed it to high mode which brings the bottom bracket up 10 millimeters and re reduces or changes the head angle to 64.5 degrees so i'm hoping that that sort of change in geometry which matches my rain and my analog race bike means i can switch between the bikes a lot easier i'll be more comfortable on this bike and it will be better just all around for climbing and descending. All right, so we're just going to look at some line choice here. With e-bike racing, you have loads of stages. So for the E, EWS, up to sort of 14, 15 stages. And that is a lot to remember. Um, I certainly can't remember that. So it's quite key not to get too bogged down on like specific line choices, but looking at um, sort of curvatures of the trail and 
prominent features that you are going to remember. So looking at the line, trying to keep the flow and keep that speed going throughout the day. So as an example of line choice, I'm not going to get bogged down on specific sort of left of that rock. What I know here is I want to go inside, inside, and that's just going to help my flow through the trail. So I'm going to go up, give this a shot and try and just use that as a key point on this stage if this was something that we'd be racing. So certainly in Inner Leithen, a lot of the e-bike stages are on these more slow, rooty, kind of rocky trails, which kind of benefit from having that motor assist um, and just keeping the momentum up as you ride the trail. Do you like that? Do I like that? Uh, it kind of makes it harder. I prefer the flowy trails, <laughs> but it's part of the challenge of e-bike racing and it is way harder than normal bike racing, way more physical, way more tiring and while it's easy going up the hills, the whole day is brutal. Or should we go finish the day on some flowy trails? We'll go and find some flowy trails to finish on because I'm pretty tired now, we've done a lot of drops and yeah, I, I also need some lunch Christo so we can go over what to carry and what to eat on the e-bike race day. What have we got here? Mm. So, as with any mountain biking event or any sporting event, nutrition is key. And uh, I'm known to like my food. So, I uh, I tend to try and eat some proper real food during a race day, especially when you've got three loops. So I'll go for the classic ham and cheese sandwich. I've got some Gruyere in there today and uh, some, some tasty ham. Um, and then during the day I'll try and use like a carb drink as well as some uh, hydration tablets to keep the electrolytes um, up and keep me kind of going through the day. Uh, bananas always get you going. Um, and then I'll carry various bars with me so I'll take some of these like stoats or uh, just some supermarket uh, chocolate ones, high carbs, a uh, bit of salt and some fats in there. and sweeties these ones in particular are excellent uh, towards the end of the day i quite often will have a couple of gels with me and they will just kind of keep me going as energy levels are really dropping benefit of an e-bike race is you're always back to the pits or the van so on a cold day so last year i had some hot coffee that kind of keeps that core body temperature hot and just keeps you going for a good day out on the bikes Wonderful. There we go, Krista. Thank you. Thank you for your wise words. So last year I spent most of the night before the race awake worrying about the charge of my batteries. I had one charging cable and had to keep switching between the batteries making sure that they were charging. So my final tip for this video is steal a friend's uh, cable charger, then you've got two and you can charge more than one battery overnight. You can sleep in peace and know that you've got a full battery ready for the day's racing ahead. That's the final tip, Christo. Thank you. Thank you for your lovely tip. Cool, so I hope you've enjoyed this e-bike tips video. Uh, we've had a good day out, getting ready for the EEWS, and yeah, we hope you can take some of these to any races that you do soon, whether that is an e-bike race or a normal race. Uh, we're gonna go and do a few more laps and runs. If you want to follow the rest of uh, the the e-bike racing this year and the other racing then make sure you hit subscribe like this video and yeah if you want to give me a bit of encouragement i'll probably need it drop a comment below and we'll see you in another contour collective trail uh, video series soon so thanks for watching bye for now <laughs> christo always says that
nice background, isn't it, Krista? There's actually a crow here taking taking on some tips for uh, his e-bike race. 